generally we're a very strong department and I think this is just making it stronger, just bringing it to a, a, a higher level. I'm excited to see where the students start and then see how much they grow that I, so that I can be with them a longer time. I can now see that and that's been really cool aspect. I'm excited about the change. I'm excited about the delivery of instruction to deepening our students' skills and understanding, but I'm excited to see that through line. So when I think about students in elementary and what it's going to look like here in the middle school and what it is going to look like in a few years out at the high school, it's just so exciting for us. It also instills a love of music. Students may feel like they're missing something, so maybe they didn't want to you know, participate, but now I think it instills that kind of that passion and love for music. My ultimate goal is to have the very best program K-12 that we possibly can have. which means that the, the students are coming out of um, academic classes, uh, so they're missing instruction that way. Upon coming to the district office, actually, and working with Dr. Baldwin, he asked me to look into some sort of things at the different levels and what we could do better. And one of the things that sort of perked up right away um, were teachers talking to me in the fourth and fifth grade about students being pulled out of math or English um, for the purpose of getting their instrumental lessons. Then we also heard from the music teachers that there were students who were being, you know, because they were being pulled out of class, were being asked to not take music so that they could be in their math or their English sections. And that just didn't seem accurate to us. So currently music is taught grades six through eight. We have two teachers that are provisioned for the building. We have music technology, strings, orchestra, and instrumental. We have one teacher that teaches in the afternoon strings specifically to students that choose that pathway and then we have our other um, music teacher that teaches throughout the day that incorporates orchestra, chorus, and music technology. General music, um, the students will go with their class um, once every three days but for instruments and strings um, students are pulled throughout the day um, for their lessons. So it's been kind of like a revolving door um, of students leaving throughout the instructional block. One of the major problems so that we have is between fourth and fifth grade because the, the students that are starting an instrument in fifth grade are already a year behind the students that started in fourth grade. I teach uh, four through eight and then my students leave me <laughs> and they go to the high school. There's a little bit of a disparity in the lessons like if you had a lesson on a Monday and then there's a Monday holiday you just get skipped the Tuesday students never miss a lesson <laughs> Thursday kids the half days they don't get a lesson on a half day so that on top of if they're choosing to go to a different specialist instead of their lesson um, the levels are a little bit all over the place and when they get put together at the middle school um, I find like grade six I'm having to balance it out more and that, that's like when we play catch up time, um, especially with music reading, instead of just playing on their instruments. As a result, Dr. Baldwin put on his goals actually for this past year to evaluate the music program and consider basically doing it different. Um, and that can be scary because I think a lot of people are used to how we've always done things. But if you don't take a moment to look at, is it meeting the objective that we really have for students, then it's not really worth whatever we're doing, right? What we think from an adult perspective and as a leader of the school, we never want the structures to impede on the learning of students. And I think this opportunity is going to just spark new ideas and creativity that we never imagined. Having a rotation of specialists and having physical education, et cetera, we knew that um, if students were used to that rotation, why not figure out when the right time to specialize in an instrument would be? The way the fifth grade lessons would now be, um, because we would not begin in fourth grade, we would begin in fifth grade, 
but the curriculum that I teach between fourth and fifth, because I don't see all the kids because sometimes they're at specialist or the Monday holidays, the Thursday half days, now no one is ever missing a lesson. And there's more of them because they're every four days that I would actually be able to complete the full curriculum of what I was already doing, but in that shorter time and it would be stronger because the instruction was more consistent and equal to everyone that's participating. The time, the length of time that they receive the music instruction will be longer than what they've previously had. So before, it would probably be maybe 20 minutes mm -hmm. by the time the music teacher would gather the students at each classroom, bring them down um, to the music room. Now, all the students will go at a specific time and have a 40 minute block of instruction versus 30 minutes. It's at least going to double the amount of true uninterrupted time students are going to have learning their instrument and we think that's going to be fantastic. Dr. Baldwin and I both have very significant scheduling experience so looking at the schedule we were able to see it outside of how traditionally elementary schools build schedules so instead of being classroom based we realized that we would need to get interest based and once we did that um, we knew it opened the door for all students to have about 40 minutes of lessons um, once a cycle and when you do the math on how many actual instructional minutes they get we think they'll actually be better equipped to go to middle school as musicians and that's really exciting to us. Uh, I'm excited to help continue to build that feeder um, not losing kids in between um, that middle school thing especially where we have such a diverse um, offering uh, of electives and, and the arts and media and CAD and coding at the high school, um, showing the kids what is possible early on will help keep those kids and hopefully find what they're passionate about. So up until now, because music teachers um, were assigned primarily to a, a specific building, yet traveled all the time, we realized that a lot of what was happening was because, you know, we're used to having this teacher in this school at this time. It didn't mean it was their strength. So when Dr. Baldwin spent time with each of the music teachers, he was able to find out their passion. Like, you know, being, say, um, say you like math, it doesn't mean you like algebra and geometry. Some people say, I liked algebra, I hated geometry, and vice versa. Same with music. You have some people who love the woodwinds. You have some teachers who are specialists in percussion. You have some, so we were amazed to get back the information that we actually have specialists in absolutely everything in this district. Mm -hmm. How lucky are we, right? So it was the perfect opportunity to think creatively mm -hmm. and outside of the box and say, is there a way to meet what we're trying to do for students, but in an even better way than we think? And in doing that, we're putting people where their strengths are. I'm excited that every teacher will be teaching in their specialty. Um, that. I mean, that's what you want. I'm excited that we will have all of our music teachers working in their field of expertise. Ms. McNulty and myself uh, are both um, certified K-12 in all areas, but our, our specialty is in voice. Uh, and so what Ms. McNulty has done at East Elementary School and what is happening up here at the high school uh, is to really grow and strengthen the choral program. So what's gonna happen is with Ms. McNulty coming up and doing uh, sixth, seventh, fifth, sixth, seventh chorus, and myself doing eighth grade chorus, we'll be able to bridge that gap, um, making sure that we have um, vocally focused instruction the whole way through. So teachers will be working with students to transition them. They'll be familiar with these students. They've been working with them for years in elementary, and then they'll transition and have a familiar face already in the middle school. They'll know the teacher's routines, expectations, and just thinking about working closely with one educator in a particular area that students feel confident or that that's where their area of interest is, is gonna deepen that connection. So when we think about what we've seen in our strings program, it's so beautiful to see at performances students really come on stage and demonstrate everything that they've been practicing. And that's really gonna unfold. There's lots of research that shows that students who are involved in music not only have new pathways built in their brain, like this significant neuroscience research that says that being a musician adds to those pathways. But in addition to that, 
One of the things that's always like really amazed me is some of our students and how well-rounded they are. You could literally have a star athlete be also a star in the orchestra. Um, and to be honest with you, when it comes to being competitive out there, I think in some way having that well-roundedness poises you for some real future success. If you're trying to minimize disruption in the classroom, you would take all, say, all of the flutes at the same time, but now they're in two different courts. So you have to schedule them differently. And with this new program, um, everyone will be on the same page at the same time. In many learning communities, they're looking at minimizing music programs. And specifically here, we're trying to make our program vertically robust. With this new program, there won't be any pull-out lessons, and um, the, the lessons um, won't have the problem where if teachers are giving a test or something like that where students are missing the lesson because of you know, testing. I'm really excited that I think with the new um, delivery of the instruction that everyone will be on this equal playing field because um, you're not going to miss a lesson because your lesson fell on a Monday. Looking at working closely with our educators for such for year after year to see what the outcome can be, it's going to be exciting. Dr. Baldwin jokes that I'm a music person and he's a sports person, um, but we both understand the value of team and goals, right? So um, over time, we're able to kind of establish what are the goals of this program and how can we have a team approach at making this the best it can be. At the high school, we have award-winning bands, choruses, and orchestras. And I'd like to see that get bigger and grow with the middle school and the elementary. So obviously Fairhaven has an exceptional music program. I mean, our students are unbelievable and have amazing talents. That being said, learning what we learned about the foundation for where it starts, we do believe that we're going to give our students the opportunity to be even better.